Hi, my name is Sarah Rose Bright. I'm a sex, pleasure and intimacy coach. And I'm here to share with you, um, I, this is a third in a, a three part series that I've done around my prolapse healing journey. So this uh, episode, I want to talk to you about sex because it's um, a, a part of the prolapse healing journey, which I don't feel is very much talked about. I mean, prolapses in general are just not talked about. And, um, you know, I, I knew very little before I had one and I've learned so much, which is why I'm sharing this with you um, to help you. Um, and I really just hope there's something in there here that can help you around your pelvic floor prolapse healing. Because, um, you know, with the, with the prolapse for me, uh, um, there's lots of negative stories out there and just acceptance of justice is the way it is. And I don't believe that. I think so much of it, we can heal the vast majority of it, in fact. And so, um, sex was a really interesting um, part of my healing journey because as a sex coach, somebody who knows quite a lot about sex and has been studying and exploring and practicing this area for years. I mean, I did get into this subject because I was terrified of it. And I went on a whole healing journey around my body and what I looked like and my pleasure, which I was just terrified, healing from trauma, a whole host of things. Um, you know, I was, when I had my prolapse, I'd had a full-time practice for, for nearly 10 years. And when it happened, my prolapse, I was really afraid of having sex. It was really, um, I was really nervous about it. Um, so I really want to share some things um, that maybe will help you um, as part of your um, prolapse healing journey, because I found the information out there is really limited in this particular area. Um, and so first of all, I just want to say that, you know, my belief is that pleasure is healing. When we have pleasure, when we have orgasms, when we experience pleasure in our body, it's incredibly healing. And so I totally believe that part of my healing journey has been having lots of orgasms and having lots of pleasure. Um, because when we feel good, it creates good chemicals and hormones in our bodies. Um, loads, of, uh, you know, loads of things happen. You know, when we orgasm, it flushes cortisol through the body, the stress hormone. You know, so many good things happen in, 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 from, from orgasms and pleasure. And I believe that it's sort of it's like our own little internal medicine cabinet that, that we can really um, uh, use for our, our healing. And, and, and I love that, that like the Taoists, um, there was this, I was reading this book and it says your jet, uh, it was a podcast. It was like your genitals create energy. And yet, you know, we may not have a good relationship with them. And especially after prolapse, we might feel, oh my God, this is it. This is awful. But actually, our, our, our engaging with our pelvic floor and, our, and the prolapse um, and our pelvis is super important for part of our healing. And I could say so much about this. Um, and if there's interest, I might do some more um, talks on this. But I just really want to give you some really uh, key tips around this that may help. So, um, I... And they're tips that will help from me as a sex coach and also me as a woman healing from prolapse. And, you know, my prolapse, as you, if you've watched the other videos, um, which has got lots of tips and ideas in, I, um, you know, I rarely experience it anymore. Um, it, 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 it hardly ever shows up. So um, what I would like to do is I'd like to share some, um, share some things because when it first happened, I was terrified. I was really scared that if I was to do any type of sexual activity, um, any type of certain types, of, well, any type of exercise, I was really scared of making, I was even scared of going to the toilet. I was just scared of anything that I might do would make it worse. And I've addressed the other things in the other videos, but particularly when it comes to sex, um, I was really scared of, 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 of penetration. Would it make it worse? If I was to have an orgasm, would it make it worse? It might seem daft, but I was just so nervous around it. Um, because when your organs are fall, starting to fall out, it, 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 it is really scary. Um, if you're watching this and you're experiencing prolapse, you'll know how scary that can feel. Um, and so um, what I did was... Um, uh, um, you know, I, I did, for me, part of my journey was the jade eggs, which I've mentioned in another video, um, and also sort of self-practice. Um, but also it was having a part, it was, it was having a partner who was open to different ways of pleasure and lovemaking, which was really important as well. So let me put this into context, you know, um, how we learn to do sex is very goal-based. So if we look at, um, 
any type of penetration, whether it's with a, a, a penis, whether it's with fingers, whether it's with a sex toy, um, our sexual experience is often seen as penetration is like the best part of it, the finale. And ideally, if it's a couple that come together, they both should have an orgasm, both at the same time. Um, and if we don't reach that, somehow sex isn't quite successful. And when we do this goal-focused sex, when we're focused on the goal, often we push our pleasure. We want it to rise and rise and rise. Pleasure, uh, movement gets harder and faster. And with that comes a certain set of behaviors in the body. So we often tense as, as the pleasure builds. We hold our breath or we shallow breathe. Um, uh, um, what else do we do? The body can become quite rigid. So a whole host of behaviors that I'm not going to go into now, but happen when we focus on the goal. And a big part of it is that we're not able to fully enjoy the present moment because our attention is always on the goal. And that can create anxiety, that can create stress and all sorts of myths that we learn about sex. Like, you know, our partner should know what to do. Um, so we don't often, you know, I've worked with so many people and I used to be this person myself. But I never communicated about it. I didn't know what I wanted, didn't even know how to ask for it. And so if all of these things are happening, then um, uh, we may be having sex quicker um, than we want to. We may be having sex when we're not as aroused as uh, penetration, particularly when we're not as aroused already. And so um, if we are having sex when we are not fully aroused and our vaginal muscles aren't fully relaxed and lubricated, um, then, then that's, um, it, it's really important that they are when we have penetration, particularly, of, uh, especially when penetration. And so, um, so, so um, in terms of um, uh, 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 in terms of, uh, of arousal, as women, we can take thirty to forty-five minutes to get fully aroused. We have a vast set of erectile tissue that can be activated around our vaginal canal. It's much more than just the clitoris and the G spot. We've got a whole load of other erectile tissue. Um, and if we're not fully aroused, then that may affect our ability to enjoy penetration. Um, and, you know, how many women allow themselves 40, 45 minutes to get fully aroused before penetration? There's a book in a, in a Darius book, and it said that, you know, the woman um, should not be entered until she's dripping wet and begging to be entered. Um, you know, how many of us have experienced that? You know, and that is not, I, I don't think it's that common. And so, um, how do we have, uh, so for me, it's the type of sex that we're having. You know, people often say to me, um, I'm not enjoying sex, there's something wrong with me. But when we look at the type of sex they're having, that's what's the problem because they're doing goal-focused sex all the time and they've just got bored and their body's just not responding. They may not have even enjoyed it in the first place because goal-based sex, there's nothing wrong with it. It can be certainly part of our erotic repertoire but it's like having only pizza for dinner every day would soon would be really boring and it wouldn't even give us all the nutrients we need. So having, um, so I talk about moving from sex that's performance based or goal based to pleasure based. And when the only goal of our sexual experience is pleasure, that changes everything. It's like putting different coordinates in the sat nav. It's about helping us to learn to, that we can just enjoy every moment, even if it's a little bit of pleasure, if it's a two out of 10 instead of an eight out of 10, we can still fully enjoy it and savor it and not rush it and slow down. And so when we do, and this is a whole nother video series, um, it, 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 but I just wanna give you a flavor of this for now. When we do this, it creates a whole different experience in our bodies. We can't be fully aroused and engorged in our erectile tissue if we're not relaxed, it's not gonna happen. And so what we wanna explore is what, we, what, what might be called a re relaxed arousal so that our bodies aren't just tensing and, 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 and the whole pleasure is not genitally focused. We bring in the whole of the body and we allow our, body, our body's arousal to build in its natural time so that we allow the full arousal rather than sort of skipping some steps to, to get to the top quickly, okay? Really key to that is breath, sound, and movement and where we place our attention so that we allow our body to breathe fully and deeply. We relax the body with sound. Making sound relaxes the jaw. It helps, it helps our arousal to travel through the body. 
movement that we allow our body to follow its natural impulses. We're not holding tight. Um, we're not contracting and staying there. There's nothing wrong with tension and contraction when we, oh, that feels good and we contract, but then we relax and let it go and we expand so pleasure can move through the body, arousal can flow. And that we have our attention on what's happening in the body, that we're able to feel the sensations because often the sensations are really subtle. But if we are allow ourselves to enjoy and savor the subtle sensations, then we have a very different experience um, and, and it helps to build the pleasure in our bodies in a natural way. So as we learn the pleasure model, as we spend more time hanging out in the pleasure model, um, we start to have a whole different experience of our pleasure. And it's going to really help the pleasure models with um, allowing our body to fully become aroused. And we want our, our body to be fully aroused. Um, and it's going to have, um, uh, um, you know, it's going to be very different experience for our pleasure. Because what, a, you know, one uh, physio said, you know, you don't want anything to drag when you take it out of the body. So if, the, but if your vagina is not lubricated, um, uh, then um, it might feel like friction if you take a, a, a cock out or, or a sex toy or a finger. So you really want to ensure your vaginal canal is, and your vagina and your vulva is really lubricated. So the best way of doing that is in natural ways, really activating your pleasure in your body. Um, and it may be going on a whole journey of sexual healing and learning and discovering who you are as a sexual being because we're not raised to love our sexual selves. And so we, many of us have had a heap of negative experiences around our sexuality and a heap of negative teachings. And I promise you that if you're feeling scared about exploring this area, it's the most magnificent and fantastic thing to explore if we can get the right support and the right guidance and the right resources because there's so much out there and it's it's you know really empowering to learn who we are as a sexual being and what's true for us what really turns us on and what really lights us up and as we get to know our bodies and our pleasure we can then guide our partners and we can have greater experiences ourselves um, from that place of authentic sexual experience not what we think we should like or is expected of us or how we feel we should perform but finding what's true for us and that's what's going to activate real arousal in our body but that's a process that takes time um, um, and can feel very scary at first but it's a really exciting one because so many people have got stuck and they're bored in their sex lives but think it's them or don't know how to ask anything for how to ask for anything different they know what they don't want but they don't know what they do want but then, you know, I remember when I was in my 30s and realized I didn't know what I wanted and just sobbing, going, oh, my God, how have I got to my 30s and not know this? But then it became a place of just total liberation and like, oh, my God, well, I'm going to go and find out and discover. And there is so much to explore. We're taught such a limited slice of what's possible. Um, so, um, so, so, if, so, so allowing your body to be aroused and learning what 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 builds arousal in your body and how arousal happens is really important. And also, you know, if you're, um, don't be afraid of using lubricant um, because sometimes lubricant be, can be what kickstarts the arousal. It can really help to, to um, get movement and pleasure and arousal building. So I really recommend, you know, get a really good quality organic lubricant. If you're using like a coconut oil or an oil, uh, some sort of oil, um, make sure you're not using oil and condoms together because oil degrades the condoms, so it's, it's a risk. Um, but if you're using condoms, like a good quality water-based lube, there's lots that are out there now on the market. Find one which works and suits your body, but really ensure that it's good quality and, and not any chemicals in it because we just really want to look after our, our yonis, our vaginas, because it's a, an incredible uh, ecosystem inside there that we want to ensure the microbiome are flourishing. And now if I go for an internal exam, I take my own lubricant along um, because um, I don't want chemical lubricant inside of me um, and, and um, you know, really advise you to do that. Um, and also the other thing that you can do when you go for an exam as a little aside is put the pet, if you're having a speculum exam, put the speculum in yourself um, because that is that something that you find uncomfortable or awkward. Doing it yourself can be, feel really empowering. I always do that now. Um, so building your arousal, getting to know what you like, exploring the pleasure model, relaxed arousal, breath, sound, movement. Explore these in self-pleasure on your own. Explore them with a partner. Um, what I found was at first I didn't want any penetration um, because I was just so scared of what will happen. Um, and so um, what I would say if you're with a partner is um, uh, um, 
create practice time. If a band plays at a massive big concert hall, they have put hours of practice in before they show up and do the practice. We're expected to just show up in the bedroom and be amazing in the bedroom without any practice. Uh, how does that happen? You know, that would never happen. We wouldn't expect to play a musical instrument and be amazing in instantly, um, you know, and, and, and so why do we expect this with sex? Uh, one of my teachers says that, you know, good lovers are made, not born this way. So create practice time for yourself or with a partner, because then you can learn about your body and pleasure in different ways. So I've given you some ideas for self-pleasure in terms of the breath, sound and movement. Try touching yourself in different ways. Include the whole body, include self-massage as well. I talked about that, I think, in the first video. Self-massage for your vulva, your vagina, your pelvis is so good as part of your prolapse healing. And then if you're with a partner, create practice time because then you can learn, build ways of communicating with each other because lots of people don't speak or if they do speak, it can come across as criticizing. So they'll, you, if you say, for example, or oh, could you try something different? The partner might see it as um, you being critical or they're getting it wrong and it can escalate. And it's in, in the main because we don't have a language for our erotic communication. And if we're not able to communicate, we're not going to be able to get the best um, sex together. If you're in business, you have a certain language for your business um, that works, which you wouldn't use in other aspects of your life. And the same happens with our erotic lives. We need a language that works. And so if we create practice time where we're learning about each other's bodies and pleasure, we're starting to talk about it. Oh, how does that feel? What do you think about, let's try it this way. Or can you try it slower? Oh yeah, that feels amazing. Actually, can you try it a bit firmer? Oh wow, or no, that doesn't work, but let's try it this way instead, go a bit faster. And as we communicate with each other, it becomes a normal part of our interaction and we find language. So I always say, how do you create language that's positive? So for example, oh, um, this feels good. And can you try it a bit slower? Oh my God, that feels amazing. And if you speak in that positive way, um you know if you have a lover who who you know you know lovers really want to please you and if you have a lover that that suddenly they've learned that you like it this way and you they're doing it for you uh, uh helping you experience that because um it's your experience um but they're supporting you with that and that happens um and you feel really good from it then it's a really amazing win-win situation and so create exploration time, create practice time. One of my favorite things is genital massage. If you go onto my website, there's some genital massage courses that you can buy. Um, and genital massage is great because it is a great way for couples to practice the pleasure model. Because with genital massage, the goal is not going for any orgasm. It's about enjoying pleasure in the body. And what I find is when people explore uh, genital massage in the pleasure-based model, it blows their mind and it changes the whole way of experiencing their pleasure. So lots of erotic genital, uh, uh, but, well, nice erotic massage on the whole body to warm the body up. And then some genital massage, trying different strokes, different ways of touching. Imagining that you're visiting each other's anatomy for the very first time. Because when we touch each other, we tend to touch each other in very... Um, one way um, and it's like rubbing the clitoris really hard doing this if there's a penis involved and that's it and yet there's so many infinite different ways we can touch each other's genitals and so genital massage is a great sort of staple regular practice couples can do that can take you to incredible bliss out orgasmic beautiful profound states okay and so then if you encourage your partner, say, let's explore and learn this together, it might be, I'm not ready for penetration right now after my prolapse, but I've read about this thing called genital massage. Could we try this first? I want to learn how to build more arousal in my genitals. I want to learn what really works, what really turns me on. Um, and so that can really help. And then finally, in terms of penetration, so I have spoke about arous arousal, I'm sorry, just to go back to genital massage, penetration with a finger then first, it might be a, a good step then before penetration with something more. And then in terms of penetration, try different ways. Penetration tends to be just to get harder and faster. And that in and out movement, um, 
uh, you know, so many women I've worked with that um, are not enjoying the penetration that they're experiencing. And that's what's causing them to shut down in sex because they don't know how to, they don't know what they don't want, as I said before, but they don't know what else is available. And then I've worked with so many men over the years who are saying, my partner's not enjoying it, but she says it's fine. And I know she's not enjoying it. And she, and, 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 and it's just, she said, just get it. Let's just, she, I've got ejaculation issues and she said she doesn't mind and she doesn't mind because it means it happens quicker. So it happens. She doesn't have to uh, uh, have sex for longer. And so this really can create a dynamic between couples that can really shut them down, that sex loses its pleasure um, and becomes very habitual and routine or even non-existent. And so, you know, penetration, um, that's just one way of experiencing penetration, but it's not the only way. And what I find is women like more faster or harder penetration when they're really, really aroused. Um, and it, if they like that style of penetration. And there's also a lot of other types of penetration. So we look at penetration on us, if we look at pleasure on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being really intense pleasure and hot pleasure, and one being cold pleasure or very cool pleasure, not much happening and we always want to head for the hot pleasure and we see it as like a hierarchy where the hot pleasure is seen as more um uh, 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 more uh, um better it's like a hierarchy it's seen as more better than the lower levels of pleasure so i say don't have it as a hierarchy turn it on its side and see it as a spectrum of pleasure and that spectrum of pleasure um is um is, is what you want to explore. So what I would say in penetration is to explore the slow sex, which is the tantric types of pleasure where literally you are in meditation and hardly moving at all. Uh, you might have the, 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 the male might have a soft cock. And I find that can be really um, incredible for, for, but for many people going from hot pleasure to cold pleasure or cool pleasure is too much of a jump. And for some people that's just not of interest. So what I say is start with the warmer waters of pleasure and from there you might get what you need or then you might be curious and try more, even more meditative styles of sex in terms of the tantric tradition. But the warmer waters of pleasure hanging out at like a five, six, seven. Um, six is that sort of um, five, six, seven a sort of sweet spot of those warm waters where you're having penetration in the pen pleasure model that it's not about the goal of orgasm, it's just about enjoying the pleasure. And also with that, um, uh, um, I'm just going to make a note of something to come back to, um, is um, also with that, that um, you might try pausing. And people can be very afraid of pausing because they're afraid if they pause, they might lose their pleasure. And it might drop, but our pleasure naturally ebbs and flows, yet we see it as this peak. And the, the way we conventionally do sex and orgasm is a peak. We push, 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 push to the top, have this orgasm, bump over in seconds down the other side. Yeah, our pleasure, that is not natural. That's one way of doing it when we're sort of maybe really horny or excited. But the, our pleasure naturally ebbs and flows and erections may come and go. Waves of pleasure may come and go. So don't be afraid of pausing. Pausing, actually a lot can happen in the stillness. I remember the very first time this happened to me many years ago where um, I was with a lover and he just stopped and paused because I thought sex always had to be about doing. And when he paused, I just had waves of orgasmic energy flowing through my body. And I was just like, oh my God, what's that? So when we pause, we can notice sensations that we don't notice when we're moving. Definitely slow down. Try slowing down. Try different types of thrusts. So it might be just the head of the penis coming in if you're in a heterosexual partnership or if you're using a dildo or fingers, just a little bit going in rather than a full amount. Then maybe try varying it between the, the, a little bit of the head and the full um, a, a, a penetration. Um, have the penis, the cock in, in whole and just try it. So if that's the vaginal canal and the penis is in, rather than in, out, in, out, try massaging inside. Try holding. Try sort of just light, short movements inside as well. And this can also activate deep pleasure in a woman. It can help to awaken our cervix. So our cervix can be a source of great pleasure. But many women are quite numb and, and, and don't have any sensation inside their vaginal canals or in their cervix. They may be numb or actually it may be discomfort and pain. And so doing this type of penetration can be a very, very different experience and can be very healing, um, very sensual, very pleasurable. Um, and it, whole, it opens up whole different ways of lovemaking. And obviously things like positions can help. 
um, all sorts of different things. Um, so um, uh, when you're, um, uh, so yeah, so that's so, so there's so much to explore. So I'm going to leave it there because I feel I've shared a lot um, and I'm really happy to do more on this. And the one thing I wanted to also say is that um, when I was speaking to a physio, she said apparently, um, uh, so, so uh, um, the prolapses can, after penetration, feel heavier after or the next day. Um, so I don't exactly know why that is, but I just mentioned that because that might be useful information for you. Um, so for example, after penetration, you know, you might want to rest and put your legs up in the air and have your pelvis up in the air because that might help you. Um, so it's just something to note. So um, I really encourage, you know, if, 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 if you are afraid of having sex, um, take your time with that. Don't rush anything. Um, explore massage and touch on your own first and just with a finger to build your confidence or maybe a, a, a dildo or a crystal wand. And then you might have penetration when you feel ready. But if you're having penetration, ensure that you're going at a pace that feels good for your body. Ensure that you're fully aroused or lubricate and lubricated. And this is where I, I'm suggesting exploring different types of penetration, exploring this pleasure model in your, all of your sexual encounters, um, exploring, really getting to know what you want and how to communicate that with each other. Um, exploring different things like genital massage rather than just focusing on penetration, which often people, that's the only thing on their sexual menu. Uh, foreplay is a little something they do in advance, but it's sort of a pit stop on the way there. And also full body pleasure. Our bodies are just these incredible mus like musical instruments we can learn to play. And the more we explore them, the more songs and tunes they will reveal to you because they are just, you know, our bodies are magnificent. And so I really hope there's been something in this for you. So please do share if you feel it's um, relevant to other people and other women. Um, you know, this is actually useful for women, uh, regardless of having a prolapse, because, um, you know, all the pleasure model and everything is, is really, um, really relevant to so many people. Um, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear how you find this, how, if you've got any questions. Um, and I'm a sex, pleasure and intimacy coach. So this is what I do in my work. So if you uh, want some one-to-one -one support with this, um, please contact me at my website, sarahrosebright.com. I do one-to-one -one work with women and couples. Um, I also do online courses and retreats and day workshops. Um, I'm going to have a workshop, uh, an online course uh, coming shortly on the Jade Egg. Um, and uh, please sign up to my newsletter where every, week, every month I um, offer a practice um, for uh, um, for, for people um, to help them to enhance sex, pleasure, and intimacy in their lives. So it's only um, you know, really simple, wonderful stuff. Um, and you know, sometimes it's the simple things that really make a difference. Um, so I really hope there's something in here for you today and I really hope to see you again. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.